Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching my Australian Open 2018 vlog. This is Wasim Parkar. Uh, it's been a fascinating two weeks and now we've come to the conclusion it's time for the finals. Yes, we just have two players standing in the women's draw and two players standing in the men's draw. And in this video, I'm going to preview the women's final. Just a quick word on the women's semifinals. I thought both of them were entertaining in their own right. The first one, Caroline Wozniacki defeated Elise Mertens 6-3, 7-6 in straight sets. Uh, in all fairness, except for a brief wobble in the second set, it never looked like Wozniacki was going to lose this match. She was in control from start to finish. Uh, just when it looked like she was going to wrap up the match even more comfortably when she was serving for it at 5-4, 30 love up. She tossed in a few double falls, started getting nervous, uh, got nervous to the point that, you know, she was just touching and guiding her shots over the net. And it came to the point that actually, due to her nervousness, that she was down 15-40 when she was 5-6 down in the second set. And Elise Mertens had some set points uh, to take the game into a third set. But Wozniacki stepped up then. She started serving really well again. She served well throughout the match. And uh, once she recovered her composure, she won the tiebreak in pretty straightforward fashion. The second semifinal, boy, this was a game uh, that everyone was looking forward to. And for once, a big game lived up to the hype. I don't think uh, we could have predicted how this game would have unfolded. What we knew was that there'd be lots of long rallies, lots of breaks and breaks of serves, and lots of counter-punching. Simona Halep ended up prevailing in three sets. It was a bit of a classic 9-7 in the third set. Both players saved match points. Uh, both players had positions where they looked like they were on the cusp of winning, but they kept fighting back. Uh, the ironic thing of this match is that whenever Kerbo or Halep were actually down, they were playing better tennis. And whenever they were ahead, they were playing a little more nervous tennis. Overall, though, looking at the reflection of the whole game, you have to say I think Halep deserved it. She was the more aggressive player. Simona Halep hit 50 winners. And for a counterpuncher that Halep is, she's not the person who usually comes up with those sort of numbers when it comes to winners. But I think she decided that the only way to beat Kerbo was to be aggressive. And she stayed true to that aggression right from the very first game to the very end, and hence deserved it. I think Kerber, uh, going in, I would have thought she was a favorite, but the way the match started, Halep raced out of the blocks, 5-0 up, then Kerber fought back, won three games on the bounce, but then got broken again to lose the set. In the second set, Halep broke Kerber first, and you thought that maybe the match is going to go straight forward. Next thing you know, Kerber fights off some break points, then breaks Halep back, and then breaks Halep again to win the second set. Starts the third set with a break, but loses it immediately. Halep's in the lead again. Kerber has to save two match points, then breaks Halep. Then Kerber has two match points. Halep fights back, and then Halep has another two match points. Again, Kerber fights back before Halep finally wins on her fifth match point. It really was a tremendous game, a great advertisement for women's tennis. And I think uh, even though Kerber lost, she can take a lot from this tournament. She beat Maria Sharapova and Madison Keys. And she looked more like the 2016 Angelique Kerber. Uh, I hope she takes that confidence in uh, to the rest of the year and maintains a high level of tennis because women's tennis will be better, off, especially with Serena coming back if we have some cons consistent challenges. So as it happens, despite all the upsets and shocks and mental fragility and players who really should have been in the deep end of the tournament, we've ended up with a women's final where number one takes on number two. We haven't had that in a women's Grand Slam final in a long time, and I, for one, am actually really happy about it because that speaks to some level of consistency for the top players, which I've been very frustrated with in Serena Williams' absence. So it's great to see number one versus number two. You know, I've often joked that the only way Caroline Wozniacki or Simona Halep are ever going to get over that hurdle of winning a Grand Slam was if they faced each other in the final, and that's how things have transpired. Now, Caroline Wozniacki leads the head-to-head 
4-2, uh, including two dominant wins in 2017, one in Eastbourne on grass. And then at the year in championships in Singapore, she actually won 6-0, 6-2. I doubt we're going to see a repeat of that scoreline in this final because I think Simona Halep uh, is playing amazing tennis, some of the best tennis of her life. Now, uh, what's remarkable is that both players have had to save match points to get to this stage. Caroline Wozniacki, of course, was on the verge of being knocked out by the qualifier Yana Fett in the second round when she was 5-1 down in the third set and 15-40 down, but she showed some great resilience to come through that game, and now she's here in the final. Simona Halep saved three match points against Lauren Davis in the third round, won that marathon 15-13, then saved another two match points, as I already alluded to, against Angelique Kerber in the semi-final. So both players have probably had those moments where you think, you know what, everything's going their way this tournament. So in many ways, I feel like they cancel each other out. Both of them are counter-punchers. I do think, though, the big difference in Caroline Wozniacki's game over the past few months is that her serve is actually genuinely a weapon. Not in the sense that she can pound a 120 mile an hour ace like Serena Williams at will, but the angles that she finds and the placements that she finds. She hit seven aces in her semifinal against Elise Mertens, though you could argue that Elise Mertens is a bigger hitter and had a more natural serve, yet Wozniacki out-aced her. Uh, and I think that serve is going to be a crucial factor. That being said, Halep is a great returner. I think... Uh, looking at things visually on how both players have played in this tournament, I would say Halep is the naturally more talented player than was Nyaiki. But uh, we've seen this in Grand Slam finals many times. It's not always the better player that wins. Intriguingly, this is also a battle for the world number one. So whoever wins this match will become world number one. And it's refreshing to see on the women's side that the new world number one will actually be a Grand Slam champion because we've just had too many instances of players becoming number one without even winning a Grand Slam. So I think the context around this final is immense. It's legitimate. Both of them have lost two Grand Slam finals before. This is their third Grand Slam. And uh, really, I think it will be a humdinger. It's too close to call. I'm leaning towards Halep, but I can't rule out Wozniacki either. I just hope we get to see a great match befitting of the occasion. This is Wasim Parkar signing out.